Everybody say hi to Tim and Mandy. They did that very well, didn't they? You don't have to touch it. It's fine, I think. Go ahead and talk and do it. Say hi. Hi. Is she on? Okay, good. Thank you. That's Tim. That's Mandy. Um, and, and I wanted to have them up here today uh, for a number of reasons, but I want to reintroduce them to you a little bit. Tim is both uh, a full-time worker guy for AT&T. He is also the treasurer of the church. He makes sure we're doing the finance stuff uh, correctly and accurately and those kinds of things. Uh, and they have, I, you know, I don't know, 17 children. How many kids do you guys have? Seven. Seven. I knew it was a seven. And, uh, and, and so anyway, they have a number of children. One of them is one of our interns this summer for KOVTOV. Uh, Alex is one of our interns this summer. Haley was one a couple of years ago. No doubt the others will plow right in. And uh, so these guys have both grown up in the church, met, got married, raising kids, these are people we love dearly and believe in greatly. Do you understand where I'm going with all that? I want you to be clear. Um, but so in the midst of all that's going on in our society today, there are so many things that take place. And, uh, you know, I was preaching last Sunday about having to understand and grow and learn some things. As, as uh, the majority race people, I'm a part of the majority race here in America. In another country, I'd be in a minority. But here, I'm in the majority race. And so there's so many things to learn and so many things that we uh, struggle with. And so um, Tim and Mandy have a story they're going to tell us today, help us hear a story that I think is going to help us understand some of our own blindness. Okay, does that make sense to you? We, gotta, we have to get rid of our blindness. And so, Mandy, I want you to just start up. Uh, you guys have, uh, as you mentioned, seven kids. You've adopted a couple of them. Tell us just a little bit about that journey, one of you, because we've, we've had you up here talking about that, but just refresh our minds. Okay. I can talk about that. She can talk about the story. Okay. Sure. Uh, so we had four kids, and then uh, we decided that we, uh, well, the Lord really moved on our hearts, starting with Mandy, that uh, we were to adopt. And so we went into that realm, and uh, it's been, wow, 2009 is when we adopted Emily, and then uh, 2011 and 13, Reese and Sophia came along, and so we have three adopted children, and, you know, they're all black. Uh, it really wasn't a focus. It wasn't a non-focus. It was, we were just kind of open, and so uh, that's how we ended up with seven. Quick and to the point. <laughs> hey, listen, if you'll go back and watch our interview with them, how you guys got there was so amazing. I mean, it's such a beautiful story, and... Uh, so we don't want to, you know, stick there. So four and three, and you adopted three that happened to be African-American. Like you said, that wasn't a goal to do it or not do it that way. It just turned out that way. And so you guys have been raising all these kids in the Fox District, right? And so, Mandy, I want to take us to a story that happened a year or two ago in school for you guys. Yeah, so... Um it was summer school, so it wasn't um, the same teachers that are normally there. We've been in the same school since Haley was in kindergarten, so most of the school knows us very well. But summer school, they bring in different teachers. And so um, I was taking Reese uh, to his class, and when I dropped him off, I just I noticed this, I don't know, just this bad vibe. I didn't feel comfortable. I just felt weird inside. But I dropped him off, and then as time went on, um, I kept getting notices that he was in trouble or doing stuff, and it wasn't really like him, so I was questioning, like, what's going on, and then she had, you know, said stuff about hitting someone, which is not like him, and so I was just curious, so I um, emailed her and said, I'd just like to meet with you and talk. This is totally out of character, so I just kind of want to see what's going on in the class, and so then she had... Um, made the principal come, so I guess she was there too. And I told Tim, like, you need to be there with me. I just felt like he needed to be in the meeting. And So I want to push pause. That first time you dropped him off, it maybe was some body language or maybe just the Holy Spirit awakening you, but you had a sense of, uh-oh, something's not kosher here. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I just, yeah. And so we were one in the principal's office well i think she did some homework the night before because there were a couple teachers there from guffy and so she was like you know has reese been a problem or and the teacher's like no he's actually so i don't know if she was trying to get someone to stand behind her or what but no one did and then she walked in the office and saw 
I so this is my husband and she kind of did like a 180 like oh like that's your husband wait wait so she saw Tim and she was what she you think she was surprised that he was white <laughs> and um, it was a totally different take from there it was how of a respectful child he is and how he helps everyone and how um, yeah he's this awesome student and so I kind of just like was like wow you know <laughs> the change overnight and so and from then he never got in trouble so so see what happens is so maybe this teacher who knows right we don't want to prejudge right. anybody's heart and mine and yet she was seeing Reese with some shaded glasses on with some you know potentially anyway that's the way it sure seems and and somehow once she actually found out more about him by talking to other teachers Mm -hmm. So, oh, well, wait a minute. Maybe I'm prejudging him, right? Mm -hmm. And then she sees Tim and like, oh, wait. What? It is, it's amazing to me that that would be a change. Yeah. Why would that change it, do you think? I, I, I guess because she was expecting, well, our youngest three, I guess she expected that I was married to a black man. And when she saw the white man, she was taken by surprise, and that changed the whole situation. Which, which that in and of itself is awful. Right? If Tim had been black, then, then maybe it, she could have been validated in her views. Like, how bizarre is that? And so, I, you know, we wanted to have these guys share that story today because what we don't understand is that there's a whole lot that just maybe seeps into our system and into our hearts. I don't mean the system of the school. The system of just how we think, what we expect, what we think is going to happen, and who we think people are based on whatever. And, and so we have to be, as like I said before, the majority race in our country, we have to take steps to push past what we don't know is already going on inside of us. Does that make sense? We have to push past that thing that, that we have a presupposition about that we don't maybe aren't super aware of. We have to push past it. Uh, you, you, I want you to tell us one other thing. You were telling me yesterday, we, I don't care about the story per se, mm -hmm. but you guys have adopted three children, they're all black, and you were talking about some of the training you guys have gotten to alert you to the idea that people are even going to treat your kids differently. Yeah, and the classes, you know, when adopting a different race or just tell you different stuff you'll have to do with that you wouldn't have to do with maybe your biological kids, and they just gave like certain stories of things that happen with different families and did you want me to say that okay so one of the stories was um, a mom was shopping with her teenage son in the mall and she went in to try some clothes on and she handed her son her purse and so he was holding it and i guess going through it you know looking in it and the store automatically called the police and they came in they were putting them in handcuffs and the mom came out of the dressing room and was like um that's my son and i gave him my purse so just stuff like that, that you wouldn't have to worry, I wouldn't have to worry about that with Alex or Kyle. And just to be aware of it. I mean, the whole adoption process is, to me, insane. When we were going to adopt Emily, you know, you get a, a profile of kind of the background to adopt, and you get the price. African American babies are five to $10,000 less than Caucasian babies, which to me is like, it's a baby. <laughs> Should they all should be the same, <laughs> but yeah. Oh, you, you do have to worry about that with Alex and Kyle, though. They would steal your purse. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> anyway, uh, so let's pray together just for a minute. Scott's going to come preach to us this morning, but let's pray. Father, we ask you to open our eyes to things, God, that we maybe today just don't really notice and don't really understand. Would you awaken our hearts, Lord? We, we don't want to brand all kinds of other people with, you know, thoughts about what they're thinking and what they're feeling. We just say, God, for us in this room, Lord, would you help us uh, pay attention and be intentional about our own thoughts, our own preconceived ideas, God, that maybe we didn't know were there. Strengthen us in this way. God, I'm just thinking about that verse in Philippians 1 where Paul prayed that our love would abound with knowledge and discernment. So God, I pray that we might be numbered amongst those that have abounding love toward all people. 
We ask you for that, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Mandy.